Humans have bred cows for thousands of years as a source of food. There are literally billions of these animals all over the world feeding our ever-growing appetite for meat. The problem we face by consuming meat on such a global scale is that large farm animals like cows belch out huge amounts of methane, which is 25 times more powerful as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. I'm at Maastricht University in Holland to meet Mark Post. He claims to have created the world's first cultured beef by growing animal muscle fibers from stem cells. He's now grown enough in his laboratory to make an entire beef burger with a price tag of almost a quarter of a million pounds. From a technological point of view, there are very, very few secrets here. Um, so What's the magic sauce then? What's the thing that you've done that no one else has been able to do? Basically growing enough material to make a hamburger out of it. So, so just relentlessness. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. We make them by taking satellite cells. That These are sort of stem cells of muscles, but they can still multiply. So we take them out, let them multiply for a long time. And then we add a number of those cells in a gel around this column. And then they start to make a muscle. And then we basically put the fibers together into a patty. So this is the freezer where we keep the two 250,000 euro burgers. You see, it's not it's the most expensive burger in the world is in um, this freezer. Right, exactly. This is it. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is the world's most expensive burger. <laughs> right. It doesn't look like a burger. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So what we have here is 80 cups of these, and every cup contains 200 of those fibers. And that's yeah. going to be defrosted and made into a patty. How big is the patty going to be? The patty is going to be around 100 grams, so it's a regular size European hamburger. And then you're going to cook it and cook it and eat it. After all that work, there it is. Right. 250,000 <laughs> euro for this. And, and it's uh, gone in half an hour. You'll be gone in half an hour <laughs> and into that belly. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think this is going to replace herds of cattle? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you, you know, if you 20 years from now, you have the choice in the supermarket between two products that are sort of identical and they taste the same, feel the same, have sort of the same price. And one is made in an environmentally friendly way and um, uh, with much less resources and provides food security to uh, the population and doesn't have any animal welfare connotations to it, then the choice will be relatively easy and then people will start to eat this type of product, will prefer this type of product. But not everyone is convinced by Mark Post's radical idea. I can't see the more affluent consumer going for it at the moment, for sure. Maybe there'll always be a novelty value to it, all those wishing and wanting to try it, but uh, I don't see it becoming a mainstream uh, a meat, probably not in the next decade, to be honest. Would you uh, ever give an artificial hamburger a try? Would I try it? Yes. I'd try it. I'd You're be not curious confident about that it'd be delicious, though. <laughs> I'm confident it'd be delicious. Um, it depends what you can put with it, really. I'm sure you can flavour it. Would you get the same bite, texture, and the natural flavours which we try and maintain in these animals? I'm not sure you would. In any case, will the public embrace cultured meat? The Observer food critic Jay Rayner thinks they will. Hi. Meat from livestock, or in fact the livestock industry, is a massive pollutant. The carbon footprint of meat production is just vast. And we have seen the price of meat go through the, the roof uh, in recent years, partly as a result of increasing demand from the rising middle classes in China and India, which is actually making a lot of meat uh, unaffordable for enormous portions of the population. So if there is a way to get, say, uh, meat products let's say, a, a, a version of mince at a much cheaper price, then absolutely people will go for it. These things will become seen as a viable alternative simply on an economic imperative. At Smithfield's market in London, the vendors we met were more sceptical. What do you think of artificial meat? Well, first of all, I believe beef don't grow in labs, it grows in fields. Uh, the public will entertain that. No one didn't say that at all. Um, especially with the likes of beef burgers and things like that. People want to know the ingredients. 
they wouldn't entertain that at all whatsoever, especially straight after the uh, horse meat scare. People are more conscious now of what the ingredients are about, where's it made, how's it made, you know, and that sort of thing. With just a few days to go before Mark Post reveals his cultured beef burger to the world, I asked him if he had any niggling doubts. There must be something at the back of your mind that's wondering, given that you're going to unveil yourself to the world's media, there must be something that makes you a little bit worried about uh, worried not, it's uh, more excitement, but uh, no, no, not, not even apprehensive. Well, you know, I, I think it's a big responsibility, of course, because um, uh, this is going to make or potentially even break sort of the future of cultured beef. And that's a, I feel that as a responsibility because I think it should, um, you know, this is a, a good cause to, to fight for. There's an understandable concern about selling and eating artificial meat, and it's not going to turn up at markets like this one tomorrow. But if we're going to satisfy the ever-growing demand for meat amongst people, and without degrading our environment, then artificial meat is inevitable. This stuff is going to appear on your plates sooner than you think.